Fun times are back in East Lansing, so of course we have the MSU Chief of Propaganda himself here to talk about Kate and Hauser, what happened on Saturday, what's going to go on this Friday, a game of true or false, and what are we thankful for at this time of the season? You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's daily fantasy sports made easy with Prize Picks. And life and conversations are easy. When you have this gentleman joining us today, it is Odell Bretham Jr. on Twitter. Also, the MSU chief of propaganda. You guys already know who this is. If you've even spent five seconds online, you are familiar with his work. Or hey, if you've listened to the show before, this ain't his first rodeo here. So, chief. How on earth are we doing here? Because at least on my end, at least on a lot of listeners' end, we're happy. This is fun. How are you doing, though? I'm fantastic. It's it's interesting because you go back, I mean, even five, six days ago, and we were coming off a, a brutal loss to Duke. A brutal. And that's coming off the yeah. loss to James Madison a few days earlier, losing by a million to Ohio State for the 30th straight year. <laughs> and now we're sitting here on the 20th of – November and listen, I feel like better than ever. I I've rejuvenated, uh, took a little dip into the fountain of youth in East Lansing, the Red Cedar River, to kind of yes. get the, you know, get get things going in my body, and I'm, I'm back. We're we're back. Things are looking it's, good. It's, it's just a, a fantastic blend of looking to a hopeful future because we are at the end zone almost of this coaching search, and this is something that we've been looking forward to for. Well, quite a few weeks here, uh, Chief. It's been a a slow drag of a season, but at least the light at the end of the tunnel was this coaching search. And I assume that things are going to wrap up at some point later this week, if not very early next week, should everything go according to plan. But also, hey, we're we're living in the moment too right now, man. I'll say it one more time. Back-to-back wins over number one Wisconsin in hockey. The women's soccer team, they got their way to the Sweet 16, but also in the bigger sport, so to speak, Football got the old brass platoon win, basketball back-to-back wins, and just looked great in both of those games at Breslin Center. But let's start with the news of the day right now. We just have two things that we're going to go over. The one is not so upbeat. It is four-star running back Scooter Carey. He decommits for Michigan State. A little interesting that it's, you know, a week before this new coaching search is made. But, hey, you know what? The kid's free to do his own thing, and he's got plenty of opportunities out there for him. The more fun news, number two, is that the big 10 weekly honors dropped. There's two Spartans after this Saturday win at Indiana. Malik Carr, after being one-third Iron Man, one-third Hulk, and one-third Captain America, he gets Offensive Player of the Week, and then redshirt freshman Caten Hauser, your freshman of the week in Big Ten play. Chief, before talking about any of those individual performances, what stuck out to you the most on Saturday. I know that's an incredibly broad question, and I know that, hey, you know what? Maybe we're letting just a win over Indiana linger a little too long, but no. This has been a miserable season. Let's talk about the fun times while they happen. What stuck out to you the most on Saturday's game? I got to say resiliency. It's, it's yeah. And I don't know who to really credit that to. I You got to give some credit to Harlan Barnett for kind of keeping sure. this, this thing together. I mean, you're without your top two wide receivers, and Kate Hauser goes out and has – clearly his best day as a college quarterback. And we'll get to that. Um, Malik yep. Carr, <clears throat> excuse me, comes back into the fold and has his easily his best day ever. Um, he should have had another touchdown that was called back due to, uh, I think, an eligible man downfield. And I mean, it was just a lot of young talent just coming out and playing well. I mean, you lose your starting center after the first possession and it, they didn't lose a beat and you just kept like, I mean, this team has taken so many hits with coaching staff. You had yep. guys going to the portal. You've had guys going to the portal and coming back. You've had guys uh, missing time for whatever reason. And there's never been any excuses. And I mean, they, they played one of their better games and listen, Indiana sucks, but mm-hmm. we're also, we were also a three, one team going into that game. Um, yep. So to see them kind of get their teeth kicked in later in the fourth quarter, come back down and, score, win the game, and then close it out. Uh, that, that's something that, yeah, resiliency has got to be 
kind of the thing that really stuck out to me. And this is a stat that we did not get to in the postgame show. I didn't know about this until after we recorded. So sorry for getting to this late. I, I, I'm no dummy. I know that, you know, with attrition, whether it be guys, you know, sitting out to go in the transfer portal or guys that are just straight up hurt. I know that Michigan State was not at full strength by any means. I had no idea it was so bad that they had 45 scholarship players in Bloomington. Unbelievable to go on the road and win anywhere in the nation. I know it's just Indiana. It's crazy to go anywhere with just 45 scholarship players. That's almost half of what you are allotted in college football and still picking up a win. And look, just starting the game with 45 players too. And then during the game as well. It, it, it's looking like a, just a minefield out there with all the injuries that they even took during the game as well. So just like you're saying too, they saw themselves go down late, late in the game. And with all the injury issues going on too, yeah, why are we celebrating a win against Indiana as much as we are? Because, well, damn it, this, this season's been long. This has been a tough season. And that was a tough game to win with 45 scholarship players. I'm going to reiterate that one more time. 45 scholarship players. That is, that is truly unbelievable <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of everything too and just like you said the resiliency the fight and everything and let's talk about that final drive and let's talk about you know the one player or I, it wasn't one player let's talk about one of the players that had a key moment in that drive Malik Carr we already know that hey they don't win this game without him okay the, the Big Ten knows that so I gave offensive player of the week let's talk about Kaden Hauser though all right it wasn't you know 60 minutes of greatness from Kaden Hauser but that final drive we saw some poise out of the redshirt freshman. All right, the fourth and three, that started with a low snap. All right, he was able to get, gather himself, keep the play going, first down. Pocket collapses not soon after that. On a second down, he gets an 18-yard scramble. And then the final play of the drive, he very well could have, probably should have been sacked. But great poise, great pocket awareness. So we're going to tip our cap to Kate and Hauser because, again, we'll reiterate this as well. We did this a lot on Saturday show. Still a young redshirt freshman. All right, there's a lot of career left to go for him. What else did you see in Kate Hauser's performance on Saturday that has you feeling optimistic for the future, uh, Chief? Yeah, I thought that was, like I said earlier, clearly Kaiten's best game in college. And I think you're starting to see kind of the growth of him. Uh, earlier yeah. in the season, you, you would see he would start, he would force passes, especially in that, that Rutgers game, his first career start. Uh, he There was a lot of pass. I mean, I don't think he threw an interception, but there was three that were dropped. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. sure he'd be the first one to tell you, like, okay, I need to make sure I'm going through my reads, making the right throws, and looking at the defense. And I think he really did a nice job with that against Indiana. I know he had a couple interceptions there. The one deep pass to Montori that kind of floated on him. Um, yep. And But, no, that, that last drive, I mean, like you mentioned, it was kind of like everything came together for that drive. And whether that can be carried over into the Penn State game. We'll see. That's obviously a different beast on the defensive side there. But uh, just for this week, it was it was really great to see. And uh, I'm obviously a huge fan of Caden Hauser. Great kid. Great family. Yep. Um, and uh, one thing I do want to I want to point out is the fact that I think he's the only scholarship co uh, quarterback still really active. I mean, Levitt is yes. redshirting, which <laughs> is smart. Uh, Noah Kim, is he shut it down after the Iowa game, uh, whether it's for injury or to preserve a red shirt or whatever, I'm not sure. But, I mean, the fact that Keaton Hauser, he, he could have done the same thing. He could be like, all right, well, I'm going to look after myself. I'm going to shut things down and see where things are at. But, no, he, he's like, okay, I got my shot here. I'm going to play. And he's taken a lot of hits. He hasn't played great in some games, but he stuck with it. And I think that that's something you can really build with moving forward. No, you knocked it out of the park there. And, well, hey, if you want to stick around the next two segments, we can knock those out of the park as well. We're going to have a nice little true or false segment coming up next here in a little bit. We'll talk maybe some coaching search, maybe some Central Michigan. Hey, where's our money right now? And then to end the show, what we're thankful for. But first, Chief, I hate to do this to such an esteemed guest, uh, but I got to kick you to the bench right now because I need to talk to people's ears off about LinkedIn jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to go check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is so easy to create your job on LinkedIn Jobs, as even a schmuck like me can do it. So when you create your job, add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you 
are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. And it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So what are you waiting for out there? LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and my favorite part for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions. You got that right. They apply. Also, tis the season. We're holiday shopping. We're going to talk about team ticker. That's right. Team ticker.com. They have the sign for the Spartan fan in your life, or Hey, maybe that Spartan fan in your life it's just the person you see in the mirror every single day. Now, this team ticker sign, if you're watching on YouTube, you know very well what I'm talking about. It's the thing behind me that's flashing stats, weather reports, countdown clocks, all things pertaining to MSU, Big Ten, and national sports. This thing is the best thing to have in your man cave, in your podcast studio, in your sports bar, in your basement, or hey, if you're a super Michigan State fan, just throw it in your bedroom. I mean, this is truly the best piece that I have in my collection. And we've gotten rave reviews from this for people who have bought a team ticker sign. You're also going to like this as well for the holiday season at teamticker.com. Smash in promo code locked on. That's going to save you $50 on your order. Again, teamticker.com, promo code locked on for $50 off of the best sign out there. All right, let's drag Odell Bradham Jr. back onto the stage here because we're going to do a little bit of true or false. Not a hard game. We could all understand this one. I'm going to give you a statement. I'm going to say true or false. We're going to banter about this. Chief, I don't know if this started as a joke or not, but uh, hey, Connor Stallions, what are you doing over there on Central Michigan sideline? And more importantly, how did you get over there? Hmm, could it be the coaches that have ties to the University of Michigan? I who knows? Quite frankly, who cares? That was you on the sidelines. That's not nice to do to a team that gave you $1.75 million to come here and fund a great deal of your select department for the upcoming year. So I don't know if this started as a joke on your end that, hey, CMU, you owe us all of that money back. So here's the first true or false. True or false. Central Michigan, in light of the Connor Stallions and the sideline saga, should pay in full the $1.75 million they got from Michigan State. True or false? Is that too harsh or is that just? False. You forgot the interest. Mm, Run there it is. Money. Bring me my money. 9%, baby. Nine. Nine. If this side keeps going. We're being nice. <laughs> Look, I know that it would it would be a little detrimental to Central Michigan. Like I don't think it completely sink the university, but I and I don't mean to sound like you know we're a white knight, we're a savior, we are Central Michigan's Robin Hood. But that's a nice favor that Michigan State did. Could you have gone to another Power Five team and gotten that money somewhere else? Yeah, possibly, sure. But you got it from Michigan State. You got the one point seven five from Michigan State. I know it's not fair. To the gymnast out there that may see a hit or the, you know, the, the male golfer out there that might see, you know, a dent in the program's resources should this money get paid back. But uh, was it fair to Michigan State to have Connor Stallions on the sideline for Central Michigan, whether he was helping the chips, whether he was gathering intel for the Wolverines? I, no, there, there's a lot of things that aren't fair in life. But what probably is fair is that when you do something this out of line, some, some money or all of the money or all the money plus interest. Uh, would be welcome back here in East Lansing. So wonder when that saga is ever going to get wrapped up. Do you think they tie up the ends to that by 2026, Chief? Or how long do we got to do this for? Oh, I'm I'm thinking, you know, I think it depends on kind of what happens Saturday. If, if Ohio State wins his game, mm -hmm. somehow I think that this investigation is going to get wrapped up maybe before Christmas. But if, if Michigan pulls this off and goes to the playoff there, probably next spring. Okay, we'll take that. Hey, look, you guys take your time gathering the money that we gave you. We will we will have it back whenever it works in your schedule with that interest that Chief uh, suggested as well. Uh, Chief, are you ready for true or false question number two? Because this, this one's going to rev up a lot of the fan base, as it has been the last few weeks. Are, are you ready for this one? Yes, sir. Now, you can't see it on YouTube because this is strapped to my ankle. But if I go more than a half hour in my day without mentioning Urban Meyer, I get a shock sent through my body. It's not pleasant. It wakes me up through the night many a times. So here we go. As we are approaching the final days, hopefully, of this coaching search, 
True or false, there is a 0% chance that it will be Urban Meyer hired as Michigan State head coach. Yes, we are doing this again. But yes, there is an appetite in this fan base to talk Urban Meyer. Is it a hard, firm zero right now, Chief? True or false? False. Oh. Oh. Well, that's fun. That's fun. Is there is there elaboration or are we... Just saying false and moving on here because, hey, I, I I like a good mystery in the air as much as the next guy does. I just think there's there's too much that has been going on since this kind of dalliance started for it just to be at a 0%. I, like, I have a ton of respect for uh, – I know Comperoni has recently said it's at zero. There's no chance. But sure. just knowing some of the things that have been going on with Urban, making some phone calls and taking a few visits to East Lansing and all that stuff and speaking with some of the – the finer Spartan alumni that um, listen, if, if it was alive two weeks ago, I don't see that it's not alive now. And sure. Um, yeah. I just, I, I just think people should not give up the dream yet. Okay. Cause my other thing too, with the urban thing, it, it's not for lack of effort for Michigan state. Like this isn't a thing where Michigan state just decided to punt and to stop trying to be like, nah, you know what? Actually we changed our mind. We really don't want urban. I understand that Urban is asking for a lot. Rightfully so. This man has won some national titles in his day. He is the best coach, in theory, available in college sports right now. Michigan State has offered all that. As far as I'm concerned, I could be wrong. I've been wrong a few times on this show, but based on the people I've talked to and everything, I know that there is a really, really nice offer for Urban on the table. So it's not for lack of, no, nah, we're not, we're not going to pursue it. Like, no, it's there. But sometimes if he does say no, Sometimes a guy just, you know, likes his studio job, the job that doesn't have him on the road for seemingly 10 days a week in college football. It's a tough job being a head coach of a program. Maybe he just wants the next chapter of his life and just smooth sail is that. So it's not for lack of trying. Is, is that fair, you think, or like, does that kind of align with, with what you understand too, Brett, or, or is it a little different? No, I, I completely agree. And it's the fact that Urban also hasn't told them no yet. Like he's, Maybe okay. come back and said like, "Hey, why don't we do this?" or "How about this?" And it's it's kind of like negotiations. It's it's like dancing, like, and it's a little bit of yeah. tug of war there. So, um, until there's that firm no that he's not going to be the guy, I, I don't think that this thing can be at zero. It just there's too much there. And uh, I know I texted you earlier this week about something. And listen, if if you're making calls to people mentioning East Lansing and Michigan state specifically that shows serious interest and you're not, um, not interested. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And listen, people get like, I, I, we've all seen the, the strong denials and I've called them over denials where it's going to the point of like, when I'm trying to lie to my parents back when I was in high school about something, <laughs> right. uh, I'm making up these stories and no, there's no chance I would ever do that. And come on, like, let's be realistic. Yeah. Now, let's say that, you know, Urban just does want to stay. He, he wants to stay at a big noon kickoff. You know, he's like, thanks, but no thanks. The next true or false question is true or false, Brett. The number one guy behind Urban on your wish list is Duke head coach Mike Elko. Is that on the top of your list in the non-Urban category? Or is there another coach that's approaching the second round of interviews that is even more of interest to you? Oh man, that's, I know it's a true or false. I'm trying to think of what is in the middle of true and false, but yeah, that's you know, fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll lean towards true. I, I, I will say back early in the process, I was big on Jonathan Smith. I really liked his situation and I, it's pretty comparable yeah. to what he have to deal with at Michigan state in terms of uh, this, where his program is compared to other ones in the conference, the resources differential and all that. But um, I think Elko, his ties to being from New Jersey, coaching on, the East coast there and having more ties in the Midwest. I think that that makes him a little bit more appealing than Jonathan Smith. Who's never been uh, East of, I think it was Montana. So um, yeah, yeah. Right. I would give Elko the slight lean and listen, that might just be me overthinking it as a fan, but uh, you wow. need those Midwestern ties to really succeed at Michigan state. I think there's something to that. No question. And I have one more true or false question to get to. It's going to pertain to basketball here. But first, Chief, again, I hate to do this to you. It makes me sick to my stomach, but I need to kick you to the bench because I need to talk to people's ears off about Price Picks, the leader in daily fantasy sports. You've heard me talk up and down about Price Picks all 
season long. This is Daily Fantasy Sport, made simple, made fun, and you can win up to 25 times your money. Now, how do you play prize picks? Well, it's simple. All right, you're going to get a nice menu of NFL players, NBA players, NHL players. You can mix and match sports too. You're going to string together a few players. They're going to give you the projected stats, and you got to guess are they going to go over that number or lower than that number. And also, too, there's a sense of community with Price Picks because do you want to play alongside some of Price Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? Well, now you can find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of your favorite names in the Price Picks community each and every week. So, gang, what are you waiting for? Price Picks wants to keep you winning right off the bat. So when you go to PricePicks.com slash locked on college and enter promo code locked on college. That's all one word locked on college. You're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. I will say that again. It is not too good to be true. It is true. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Now let's get the chief of propaganda back into the mix here. We're going to hit the hardwood here. And true or false, Thursday's a big game. Arizona, top 10 team. They beat Duke at Cameron Indoor. Very impressive. Should Michigan State win on Thursday? True or false, everything's all good in the hood. We just forget about James Madison. The Duke loss is excused. Everything is all peachy king in East Lansing if they win on Thursday. True or false, or is that a little too big of an overreaction, you think? 100% 100% true. And I, I think you chalk that up to the fact that we the, the two losses, we shot four for 44 from three, I think it was. So yeah, 100% right. there from the math is correct. Uh, improving on the math since I've been doing interest rates for Central Michigan University. But <laughs> Amy, Amy Follin, uh, I'm here. But no, um, I, I mean, you can kind of chalk those two up to outliers. If, if you can go on and, I mean, you beat a, a decent Butler team. You shot the ball really well. Thad Mata, legend, said Michigan State that, no one could have beat that team that night. That, right. That, that's high praise that you, you take to the bank from Thad. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if you can come in and – I love watching Arizona play. I think that that's yes. like a matchup nightmare for us because I swear everybody on that team is, like, 6'11". It, it's insane. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Everyone's the the height of a redwood tree. It's unbelievable. Caleb Love is having a strong start <laughs> to his season. Michigan legend Caleb Love. Excuse me. Let me put some respect on that name. He's having a strong start to the year. So yeah, it's not just like you know being in a top ten team. Like Michigan State has done that before, obviously. But like this would just have a little bit of extra shine on it, just because of how Arizona is built. Like that is a powerful front court. Whereas Michigan State's front court. Like, you know, obviously Jackson Kohler out. You're already a little hampered there, but it's not the strength of this team. So if you could overcome all that in a Thanksgiving game in Palm Springs, like that's, yeah, we are going to overreact to that. We are going to say that everything's back to normal and that, yeah, this is back to being a top 10, dare I say, maybe even top five team if it goes that well on Thursday. I don't I don't think that's being a Michigan State slappy. I, I think that's, well, within reason, just because of how wonky it did start with the shooting, just like you mentioned. I. I don't know. I, I will not be okay. I will not act like I've been there before. If they win on Thursday, we are, we're going to go crazy chief. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> yeah. And I, this is a game that I, it's not a must win, but I mean, this is a catapult game. Like you, you look at, yeah. I think it's comparable to, I mean, we switched to football here for a second. And when we went to Miami and won that game, ah. like, I mean, you win, a, you win games like this and I mean, you, it springboards your season. Like that makes the game against Baylor more attainable. It's like, okay, we've yeah. we've beaten a better team than this. We played a team that has national championship aspirations, and we we beat them. So we we can beat Baylor. In our, I mean, basically at home there and at LCA. Yeah. But um, you you lose the game. It's obviously then you start to question like, okay, like if, if our three point shooting resorts back to where it was the first couple games, like what does that mean? Um, or if, listen, if you shoot the lights out and you lose, then it's like, okay, maybe we don't right. have all the pieces to get it done. So I think losing, it's going to cause a ton of questions. But if you do win, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a party. No, no doubt. And speaking of party, hey, it's going to be a very joyous Thanksgiving. Either way, you know, even if the boys don't pick up the W, because it is Thanksgiving. So tis the season here, Chief. What are we thankful for 
on this on this blessed week of Thanksgiving for Michigan State fans. It could be one thing. It could be 15 things. But, like, is there anything really that you have to get off your chest and just say, like, I am thankful as a Michigan State fan for blank? The three-month coaching search coming to an end. I know we were <sighs> – we all joked like the coaching search of 2020. We only got like a little bit. We got like a week of it. Like it was yeah. fun. You had shoes, you had planes, you had all this. And listen, whatever you put out in the universe, be careful what you wish, wish for because the next coaching search we got, we got a nice little three month search and it has been nothing but speculation and arguments. So I am so yep. thankful. And listen, I, I don't want to be too cruel to the staff that's currently here. They put in a ton of work. Like we yeah, appreciate good times, but I am also very thankful that we're going to have a new football staff coming in in the next few weeks here. It's just so needed. One, one silver lining too, for the staff that is out the door, like thanks for your time and everything that, that that's generational money that they got. Like that, that was a top <laughs> flight assistant pay pay pool that they benefited from. So like, I, yes, I feel bad. I feel horrible. I've said some pretty mean things on here. I'm going to be honest, but like they've also made more money in the last four years than I probably will see in my entire life. So um, I, I can't be like, I'm <laughs> just crying myself to sleep because I'm saying too many mean things, but yeah, so we can all be thankful for different things here. Um, I, This is early. It's premature. He didn't even play in the last game. I'm thankful for Tyson Walker uh, just coming back. I know that he realistically probably didn't have NBA draft prospects out there, but never in life do you have to come back to a place. Like I am I'm beyond thankful already as he's averaging 23 points a game to kick off this year that he's a Michigan State Spartan. Like I, this can even go back a few years ago when they fished him out of the transfer portal. Like I, I am deeply thankful for Tyson Walker. So that I, I want to throw that out there as far as basketball goes. Oh, without a doubt. And one more thing I, I, I am thankful for. It's I think it's just Michigan State fans. Like, I know yeah, I, I was at the go. Champions Classic in Chicago, and I mean, the whole city, everywhere you went, there were, it was Michigan State. Like, you're at the game. That was my first Champions Classic, and sitting with, sitting with the guys, and just, even though we lost, like, being able to be a part of those sort of environments, it's something that I think we take for granted at times, but sure. uh, very thankful that we have a Blue Blood program, uh, we have the best fans in the world, and uh, obviously football, we didn't have the season we wanted, but... Um, I feel very confident. We're we're all going to be very happy with what the new staff, whoever it is, is going to come in here, get us back to where we need to be, and we're going to do it ethically. Here, here. I don't mean you know what. One more thing that just popped in my mind too, as you talk about fans and everything. I don't mean to stoke flames on this next topic here because in, in the off season, this was a very heated debate so much so that me and a few listeners almost drove somewhere to meet each other and just fight over this. Uh, the Ford Field game. I got to say, I'm, I am really looking forward to that this weekend. And is it because I'm a wuss, I'm a coward, and I just don't do well in cold weather, and I'm excited for, you know, a climate-controlled game? Yeah, that certainly has something to do with it. No question whatsoever about it. But it, it's going to be different. It's going to be new. Like, I, I am excited, as this team, you know, has a little bit of momentum after the Indiana game, just to get together. It's not even so much for the game itself. But it's going to be just a nice, festive atmosphere, I think, for the state fans that do go. Because let's not get it twisted. If you don't go to this game, you're not a bad Michigan State fan. But if you do go to this game, you are like a diehard Michigan State fan. So it's just going to be a nice environment inside of Ford Field. We'll have some Miller lights flowing out there. It's, I, I am really looking forward to this Friday's game. Win or lose, it's going to be a hoot nanny with Spartan Nation. So are, are, are you going? I don't want to put you on the spot here, but are, are you going Friday? Yeah, I plan to go and. Yeah. Okay. It's funny you you mentioned the Ford Field thing. It's because and Coach D'Antonio talks about completing your circles. I think we actually did a show like the day after this news broke that they were going to do the game yes. at Ford Field, and we yep. were talking about like, <laughs> hey, like you people on the west side, you can suck it up. So, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I kind of ran my mouth a little bit. So yeah, I'll be there Friday. And the oh, nice oh, warm, my controlled yeah. climate. Um, um, yeah, after the, the game we talked before the season about this game, it would be insane for us not to be there. Like that, that'd be deeply, deeply hypocritical to, to, to not show up. So, yeah, we kind of have to be there. I'm looking forward to it, but like, we're we're going way off topic here. No one could possibly care about this. This is I'm just making this all about myself at this point. Chief, I'm a little scared right now, man. I, I only went to one game this year to start the season. That's because we brought a second kid into the world. I. I I go by Fireball Somalia on Twitter. It's clear that I fancy a beverage every once in a while, but I'm going to 
keep it honest with people, the last like month and a half, two months of my life, I I've almost like reset my drinking to zero. I fear like two tall boy Miller lights in Ford Field is going to send me to like the shadow realm. So I, I am a little scared on Friday. I do have to be honest with myself. Like I, I'm not what I used to be in college, certainly, let alone what I even was like a year ago. <laughs> Chief, I'm scared. I, I, this might take three days to like get over after this game Friday, even if I keep it cool, just like two or three beverages. I, I'm such a wuss. I'm washed, man. I'm washed, Brett. This, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Well, do I have news for you? I, when we okay. were in Chicago, we, we went to this Irish pub. And they okay. have this new drink. The, the, the waitress walks up and, you know, we're already feeling good. And she's wearing this shirt that says McCallahan's or something. And she's like, hey, like, hey, like, we have this new drink here. It's the, the makers of Fireball. They came out with this new, like, oh, God. this new alcohol. And they had, like, grape flavor, root beer flavor. And they had, oh. like, a bunch. And they had apple pie. Oh. Let me tell you, it was easily the best I've ever had in my entire life. The bill, like I woke up the next morning, I checked my, my credit card statement. I'm like, oh my God, like did I, did, did I down a fifth myself? Like what, what what's going on here? So I oh, need no. to find that and I need to get that in your hands immediately. Oh, oh I, I just running through my mind right now is any Ben Affleck smoking meme that you've ever picked. Like <laughs> I, I am very excited, but here's the thing too. It's like, I'm just excited to get back out there, get back to a Michigan state game. And like, I, I like to think I have a lot of self-discipline. I, I just don't know if I will. And it's not going to take me a lot to get there either. Like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened. I'm scared, but enough about me, chief. This has been delightful. Hey, if we run into each other on Friday, Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be like just seeing your favorite celebrity of all time. It, it is always a hoot and a half <laughs> seeing you, man. So, uh, but Hey, until then you, the listeners go enjoy the rest of your week. Truly love every single one of you. You guys are the best. Thankful for all the listeners, all the viewers. We will be back later on this week. We're going to do some hockey talk tomorrow. And then, hey, you already know when the coaching search bomb drops, we're going to be talking up and down about it here locked on Spartans. So, Chief, thanks a lot, my man. You are the best. Go green. Go white, guys. Love you all. <laughs>